the Johnson Wax Program with Fibber McGee and Molly. Your Red Cross button is a badge of honor. Wear it proudly for humanity and defense. Join the Red Cross today. Makers of Johnson's Wax and Johnson's Self-Polishing Glow Coat present Fibber McGee and Molly, written by Don Quinn, with songs by Martha Tilton and the King's Men, and music by Billy Mills. The show opens with Be Young Again. stop to think how various kinds of business are closely related to each other? In our system of free competition, there isn't any such thing as isolation. A new basic material or process is discovered, perhaps in a remote laboratory. If it's really worthwhile, it may cause far-reaching changes in the products of many industries. When the metal chromium was made available commercially, it certainly found a great many uses, all the way from dolling up your automobile to making handsome modern furniture. And to protect the beauty of these sleek surfaces, the makers of Johnson's Wax developed special wax dressings that are widely used by the manufacturers of chromium equipment. If you have chromium pieces in your home or office, you can protect them against wear and harmful fingerprints with genuine Johnson's Wax. You can keep the chromium on your car brilliant, either with Johnson's Car New or with Johnson's Auto Wax. It really is surprising when you begin to investigate the great number of uses for Johnson's Wax Polishes besides those familiar to you in your own home. But play safe. When you order polishes, be sure they carry the name Johnson. Your assurance of complete satisfaction. Prevails in Wistful Vista today. Look who's laughing. The picture that our friends made with Edgar Bergen and Charlie McCarthy is having its world premiere at the Bijou Theater tonight, and everybody is in a dither. And here at the airport, where they are waiting for the arrival of Bergen's plane, we find Fibber McGee and Molly. My, my, this is an interesting place, McGee. You know, we ought to come out here oftener. I think so, too. More planes. Oh, boy. Did you see that one, Molly? Yeah. That's one of them new military planes. One of the H-I-C-T-I-Gs. The what? H-I-C-T-I-G. Yeah. Here it comes, and there it goes. (laughs) I'm thinking about buying a plane myself. Imagine me getting a sudden call to Washington, packing my bag, dashing out here to the airport, and leaping into my plane. Out the other side and down to the railroad station. With me on your heels. No, dearie, you stay down here where the terror is firmer. Yeah, but Bergen says... Mr. Bergen isn't married. Maybe he ain't now, but wait till Mrs. Uppington goes to work on him. <laughs> There's a grass widow that's out to make hay. Believe me. Hello there, kids. You're just the kids I wanted to see, kids. (laughs) What can we do for you, Mr. Oldtimer? Give me a couple of tickets to the premiere tonight. How's about it? Gee, I'm sorry, Oldtimer, but we had such a demand for him that I... No, come on, Johnny. I'll be in there whistling and stomping every time you come on the screen. Well, uh, how loud can you whistle? Listen, daughter. Uh... Well, I can stomp and holler, can't I? (laughs) Well, I'll see if I can find you a couple later on, old-timer. Just now we're waiting for Bergen and McCarthy. Oh, they flying in? No, they're coming by rowboat. <laughs> we came out here to throw them a rope. <laughs> That's pretty good, daughter, you sassy little minx. <laughs> but that ain't the way I heard it. The way I heard it, one feller says to tell a feller, say, he says, I see where... Oh, so is that so, says Telefella? What makes you think that the other was on the... Well, says the first fella, if they ever get out there... Make mine with onions. <laughs> Best one I've heard for a long time, kids. Anything I like, it's a yard with a punch. 
I always Attention, say... please. Attention. Oh, quiet, boys. Here's an announcement. Flight 79. Plane leaving gate 5 for Happy's Landing, Hot Springs, Warm Springs, Cold Springs, Chillicothe, and Orson's Wells will not be leaving. <laughs> Must keep that guy busy announcing the planes that don't leave. Hey, old timer, can I have a private word with you? Sure, Johnny. Excuse us a minute, daughter. Oh, that's all right, boys. I'll go inside and watch the passengers getting weighed. You know, it does things for my inferiority. I'll be back in a minute. Well, what's on your mind, Johnny? Look, I'll get you a couple of tickets for the premiere on one condition, old timer. You want to make a deal? I'll do anything that's honest and above board, Johnny. Otherwise, it'll cost you three tickets. Look, when the picture is over, you walk back and forth amongst the people out in the lobby, see, and rave about how good I look on the screen. What do you say? Three tickets. <laughs> okay, three tickets, then. But it won't hurt your conscience any. I am good. Now, remember, all you got to say is something like, Boy, that McGee is a great actor, ain't he? Good and loud. You got it? I got it. Hey, that McGee is a great actor. Ain't he good and loud? No, 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 no. You say it good and loud. Oh, I... So all the newspaper guys will hear it. Oh, yeah. Now, here's the three tickets. Hey. And don't let me down. Okay. I'll be in there pitching, Johnny. I'll give you a build-up that'll make Gary Cooper get on his horse and ride away in the sunset. Ah, I don't... <laughs> That was a great idea. Well, maybe it ain't strictly ethical, but... Well, why ain't it ethical? Well, shucks, it's just publicity, ain't it? Well, yeah, but it's kind of underhanded. What's underhanded about it? Well, it's almost bribery. It ain't any such thing as bribery. All I done was... Gee, to... what oh. are you so excited about? You're all red in the face. Oh, I, I was just having a little argument. <laughs> I'm the most unreasonable guy to argue with. <laughs> hey, wait. He's landing at the far end of the field. Well, let's run out and meet him. No, wait here. He, he'll taxi up to the gate. What? Take a taxi for that little way? That's too extravagant. Come on. Oh. Kingsman sing, I like a balalaika. Won't you come with me down to the Russian quarter? You will hear a melody strummed by a Russian quarter. The instrument he plays is old as love itself. It's called a balalaika. I'm speaking for myself. I like a balalaika, a Russian balalaika, because the gal I like a likes to hear the balalaika playing like a balalaika play. Hey, hey, they play a passion not them, and turn to worse than nothing. They sing an awful lot of notes, and that is why I like to listen when the balalaika play. Hey. You know that steel guitars don't go with Sam or I up yam, I up yam. The balalaika is all you fear in good old Russian atmosphere. Oh, the balalaikas come come on to taste McCarthy, Molly. They're up in Uncle Dennis's room. He won't be here tonight. He won't? No. He said he had an all-night gin rummy session, and between the two, he probably wouldn't be home. Oh, <laughs> oh McGee, here's Mr. Bergen and Charlie. Oh. Hi, fellas. Uh, find everything you need upstairs, fellas? Oh, yes, Vivi, yes. We're very comfortable, thank you. And uh, you, Charlie? Oh, I'm, I'm all right, Mom. Uh, don't mind if I call you mom, do you? <laughs> Not at all, Charlie. I love it. Good, good, good. <laughs> That's 
to approach number 17, boys. <laughs> Make them feel maternal and you got them. <laughs> hey, where do you folks keep the bicarbonate? Well, what's the matter, Charlie? Don't you feel well? Uh, no. You know, I had 15 butterscotch Sundays when we were waiting to take off this morning, and... Well, they kind of sneak up on you, you know. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I remember one time I was... So oh, to... dear. Come in. Oh, how do you do, Mrs. McGee? And Mrs. McGee. Hello, Abigail. Hi, Uppy. Who's the moose in the minx, Bergen? <laughs> why, Charlie? Why? why, she's a society leader here. Mrs. Uppington, I believe. Oh, is that so? Is that so? She looks like a five and ten cent baby from a million dollar store. <laughs> Charlie, will you remember we're guests here? Uh, hey, Ed, I want you to meet a friend of ours, Mrs. Uppington. Yes, Mrs. Uppington. Uh, this is Mr. Bergen and Charlie McCarthy. Oh, yes. How do you do, Mrs. Uppington? Uh, oh, I'm simply delighted to meet you, Mr. Bergen. I've been dying to meet you. All over or just your hair again, Uppy? <laughs> well, Mrs. Uppington has talked of nothing else for days, Mr. Bergen. You know, she's one of your greatest fans. Yeah. Well, that ought to cool you off, Bergen, huh? <laughs> I take it you're going to the premiere tonight, Mrs. Uppington? <laughs> Uppington, Charlie. Oh. Abigail Uppington. Oh, excuse me, Mrs. Uppington, excuse me. <laughs> oh, that's quite all right, you dear boy. <laughs> After all, a rose by any other name would smell. You said it, babe. You know. <laughs> Will you watch what you're saying, Charlie? Well, there's many a slip twixt your lip and my quip, Bergen. <laughs> yes. You know that. Ah, <laughs> oh, Charlie is such an irrepressible little fella, Abigail. Oh, of course, my dear, I understand. Oh, and I'm so glad I met them, so I could invite you all over to my home after the theater tonight for midnight supper. Oh, well, thanks, Uppy. We'll be there. I always have an appetite after watching one of my performances, Uppy. <laughs> <laughs> you ought to. You're strictly from hunger. Yeah. <laughs> Charlie. Uh, you, uh, pretty bad, pretty... No, you know, Fibber did a wonderful job in that picture. Yes, wonderful sir. job. Yes, sir. I remember what you said after the first day shooting, Charlie. Well, what did I say, Ma? What did I say? I know what you says. You says, what a character man he is. Yeah? That's exactly what you said, Charlie. No, no, not exactly. No, not exactly. Well, what I said was, man, what a character he is. I know. Oh, you yeah. <laughs> Well, how about this midnight supper, Bergen? Shall we sneak over to Snooks for a snack? Well, of course. Ah, sure. <laughs> and they have some laughs up Yes. Yes, we'll be there, Mrs. <laughs> Uppington, and thank you. Oh, splendid, splendid. And it will be such a lovely night. I do want you to see my garden by moonlight, Mr. Bergen. Uh -huh. <laughs> well, see you there. Hasta la wistful vista, as we say in Spain. <laughs> <laughs> You seem to have made quite an impression on her, Mr. Bergen. All you got to do to impress her is wear trousers and speak English. <laughs> and broken English would do. Uh, oh, a very charming woman, I thought. No, careful there, Edgar. She's setting her cap for you. Oh, my goodness, not that, not that. Not well, that. what's wrong with that, Charlie? Did you ever see Bergen in a cap? <laughs> <laughs> I've seen Ed in a cap, and I thought he looked pretty smooth, Charlie. Well, he looks a lot smoother without it. Oh, <laughs> Excuse me, I've got to run up and get dressed. It's almost time to go to the theater. Oh, certainly, Molly. We'll run along now. I will just... Hey, Fibber, how about... Oh, hello, Edgar. Hello, Charlie. Oh, hello, Harlow. Well, if it isn't the old polish promoter. <laughs> How's your linoleum today, Mr. Wilcox? <laughs> pretty perky, Charlie. How's your coffee? Percolating pretty, pal. <laughs> Are you going to the premiere tonight and see yourself on the screen, Mr. Wilcox? Oh, gee, I don't know, Molly. I'm scared. I guess I've got stage fright. Oh, you've got to be there, Harlow. You'll be expected to say a few words into the microphone, you know, for the crowd. Honest, will I? Why, yes. Oh, it's easy, Mr. Wilcox. You just say what everybody else says. I hope you will enjoy seeing this picture half as much as we enjoyed making it. <laughs> <laughs> Work like dogs. Yeah. <laughs> What's trite always you, Ah, yes. oh, you mustn't be nervous, Mr. Wilcox. Well, I am. Every time I get in front of a microphone, I automatically start talking about Johnson's self-polishing glow coat. No, 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 not this time, Harlow. Well, it hardly fit the occasion. Well, I think I can make it fit. Oh, dear. Look, suppose I said something like, ladies and gentlemen, with genuine Johnson's glow coat with its swift results and absolute minimum of effort and the elimination of old-fashioned rubbing and buffing, you have more free hours to see moving pictures like this. 
It's really a great combination, folks. Fibber and Molly work for Johnson. Johnson's make glow coat, which gives you leisure to see Fibber and Molly in the pictures. <laughs> it's a vicious circle, isn't it? <laughs> well, how about us, Wilcox? Uh, we were in there, too, you know. What do you mean, Charlie? Well, why don't you say after in the movie, ladies and gentlemen, enjoy a grand cup of delicious Chase and Sanborn coffee. Yes, in your beautiful, gleaming, spotless kitchen. Darn it, he did it again, didn't he? <laughs> well, I better run home now and get dressed. I'll see you later. Doesn't he ever lose his gusto, Fibber? <laughs> That guy thinks the seven wonders of the world are the pyramids, the hanging gardens of Babylon, and five cans of Gloco. <laughs> well, I simply must be getting dressed, and you boys had better be getting into your dinner clothes, too. I believe you're right, Molly. Come on, Charlie. Uh, go ahead, then. Go ahead. I- I'm going to wear pajamas. Oh, but pajamas aren't dinner clothes, Charlie. Well, they are if you eat in bed. <laughs> Well, now go away, all of you. There's a book here I want to read. It. What is it, Charlie? Well, it's it's uh, it's Peoria High School Annual for 1912. <laughs> it's a murder story. What it is? What do you mean a murder story? Well, look at this picture, of you. It kills me. <laughs> Come on, Molly. Come on, Ed. He's a character. Peoria High School. I'll bet he was voted the student most likely to succeed, making a chump of himself. It. <laughs> You know, I'll, uh, come in, come in, come in. Hi, Mr. McGee. Oh, <laughs> you're not Mr. McGee. No, you can say that with a glad smile. <laughs> My interesting little intruder. Gee, I bet you're Charlie McCarthy, I bet you. I am, I am indeed, I am. Charles McCarthy, man of the world, man about town, and man of pumps, boys. I'm going to work. Are <laughs> <laughs> uh, you, uh... You a local girl, beautiful? <laughs> huh? I say, uh, are you one of the neighborhood nifties or one of the more impressive imports? <laughs> Not that I don't want to be personal, because I do. <laughs> well, I live in that greenhouse across the street. Is that so? A greenhouse, huh? Most appropriate, I blooming well think, my blossom. <laughs> you mean it's a bouquet, I'm okay, huh? Yeah. <laughs> You're the girl of my dreams. Let's take a walk in my sleep sometime. <laughs> How's about a date for the premiere tonight, huh? Oh, I bet you, you don't want to go out with me, Mr. McCarthy. Oh, come, come. Let's not stand on formality. Let's jump on its face. <laughs> call me Charlie, huh? Or better than that, wouldn't you like to call me... Chuck, huh? Yes, I would, Chuck. No, no, not would, Chuck. No. Oh. Okay, Charlikins. Oh, that's better, Charlikins. Uh, would you say it again? Charlikins. <sighs> Mozart never wrote music like that. Come over here and sit by me, angel face. Let's discuss us. Well, I guess I better be going home. I gotta do my homework. Homework? Oh, tush, tush. Going out with me is a liberal education. <laughs> well, if Bergen was more liberal with me, I could be more liberal. Well, let's face facts. <laughs> you know, I could go for a girl like you. Gee, could you? Yes, indeed. How about a, a little kiss? Uh, you good at oscillating? No, I always fall down. Ah, uh, uh, what was that? You said, was I good at ice skating, and I said I always fall down. So, ice skating and osculating are two very different things, my demi-debutante. Or didn't you know? Sure I know, I betcha. In ice skating, you got to keep your feet, and in osculating, you got to keep your head. And if you think you're getting anywhere with that fast power, you better get back in your den before somebody collects the bounty on you. So goodbye, Wolf. <laughs> Scuttle my schooner and call it no sail. <laughs> hey, Bergen, lay on my evening clothes. I'm going with you. <laughs> Arthur Tilton sings, I See a Million People. I see a million people, but all I can see is you. I hear a million voices, but 
but only your voice comes through. I wait for your footstep, I've waited before. I know that it's you. If you knock on the door, I'll know you're around by the sound of my pounding heart. I see a million faces, but what do I really see? A million little traces keeps bringing you back to me. And try as I may to forget to care, what can I do if you're always there? I see a million people, but all I can see is you. I've tried on my own to go it alone. I've tried to get lost in a crowd. But even when I've wandered the roaring streets, the picture of you repeats. I see a million faces, but what do I really see? A million little traces keeps bringing you back to me. And try as I may to forget to care. What can I do if you're always there? I see a million people, a million little traces, a million kinds of voices and a hundred million faces. But all I can see is you. Excuse me, mister, but am I too late to see Look Who's Laughing? I couldn't find a place to park. I'm sorry, sir. It's just about over. In fact, it is over. You better stand to one side. Here comes the crowd now. <laughs> Very good picture. Yes, I enjoyed it. Well, Molly, what do you think? Pretty good stuff, eh? Well, I thought it was very good, McGee. How was I? I don't know. I was busy watching me. <laughs> How was I? I don't know. And for the same reason. <laughs> oh, oh, hello, Mayor Latrivia. Yeah. Uh, did you like the picture? Yes, indeed, Mrs. McGee. I thought you did a simply splendid piece of work. Uh, how about me, Trivial? Is it true what they say about me being another Barrymore? It's possible, if there must be another Barrymore. <laughs> Good night. Good night, Mrs. McGee. Good night, Mayor. <laughs> McGee, where are you going? In the box office. I want to use the telephone and call the newspapers. Going to tell them what a success it was. Come on, Molly. I'll tell them. Hey, bud. You mind if I use your telephone? Who are you? Don't you know? He was the star of the picture tonight. Yeah. Oh, oh yes. I didn't recognize him, Mr. Bergen. Uh, go right ahead and use the phone. Oh, hurry up, up, McGee. I want to go out and hear what people are saying. Okay, okay. Hello, operator. Give me the Wistful Vista Gazette or the... Huh? Oh, is that you, Mert? Uh, <laughs> you're at a time like this. How's every little thing, Mert? It is, eh? What's say, Mert? Your brother. Thrown in the who's gal, eh? Oh, heavenly days. What for, McGee? The police force elected him king of the cops for 1941, and they're building him a throne in the Who's Gal. They're building him a throne in the Who's Gal. <laughs> Say, Mert. Line's all busy. Okay, I'll call later. Goodbye, Mert. Why don't you do it again? Come on, Molly. <laughs> well, thanks, bud. Okay, Mr. Bergen. <laughs> Yes, I thought that wild airplane scene was the most exciting. It was the dishwashing scene that got me. I never liked it. Charlie so McCarthy was talking to the fellow. Yes, sir. I always said that Edgar Bergen was one of the finest actors on the screen. What a job he did tonight. Uh, hey. Yes, sir. Uh, hey, old timer. Come here a minute. Well, hello there, kids. <laughs> Great picture, wasn't it? And what do you think of this Bergen boy? Really got something, eh? Yes, sir. Bergen is the. Hey, new... wait a minute. Huh? Did we have a deal on or didn't we? Hey? Who? Oh. Oh, you mean them three tickets you gave me to talk you up, Johnny? Say, what is this? That's what I mean, and don't talk so loud, old-timer. What's the idea of double-crossing me? We heard you come out raving about Bergen. I know, Johnny. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> Personally, as actors, you and Bergen are about even. But when you give me three tickets and he gives me ten bucks, well, you can see how it is. <laughs> Excuse me now, I've got to go do my job. Yes, sir, that boy Bergen 
is potentially one of the greatest... <laughs> Put a muffler on it. Dad, Brad, the death of his luck. Well, I'll be a monkey's uncle. Yes, and I hope your nephew is proud of you. Now, come on. <laughs> Much has been said of late about our standard of living. There's no doubt it's about the highest standard the world has ever produced. In wages, in food resources, in daily living comforts, we're pretty lucky. The average man in his job, the average woman in her home, has much to be grateful for. That doesn't mean we're perfect or that we can't go on improving. We will. And manufacturers will go on developing new products to make our living still easier, more attractive. Look what the makers of Johnson's Wax did for you women when they brought out self-polishing glow coat. They solved an important problem for you. How to keep linoleum surfaces, especially kitchen floors, clean and beautiful without continuous scrubbing. Scrubbing, you know, is bad for linoleum, whereas glow coat did away once and for all with that chore. It saves countless hours of work every week because it needs no rubbing or buffing. Now, of course, to get glow coat results... You need the original, the genuine Johnson self-polishing glow coat at dealers everywhere. Ladies and gentlemen, Edgar Bergen and Charlie McCarthy will appear at the Golden Gate Theater in San Francisco tomorrow, Wednesday, for the opening of the picture we made together, Look Who's Laughing. Yes, and we hope you'll all go see them. We had a lot of fun doing it, didn't we, dearie? Yeah, but I don't know. As good as I was in it, I, I really think I could still do better if, they, if I had the... You know, that's what everybody says. <laughs> they do? Gee, ain't that wonderful? Oh, say, McGee. Huh? I almost forgot. Huh? RKO called this morning, and they want you to come back. Hot dog. They do? To make another picture? No. You left your correspondence course in how to act in the dressing room. <laughs> oh, so. Good night. Good night, all. Good night. This is Harlow Wilcox. Speaking for the makers of Johnson's Wax Finishes for home and industry. Inviting you to be with us again next Tuesday night. Good night. Makes a hard job easy. That's what many thousands of car owners are saying about Car New, Johnson's new auto polish that both cleans and wax polishes in one application. Car New does two jobs at once. Saves work, saves money. It will help you take better care of your car, increase its trade in value. Get a can this week. Wax polish your car with Johnson's Car New, spelled C A R N U. This is the National Broadcasting Company. Mm-hmm.